Have you ever wondered why some people still call it tin foil when it's clearly labeled as aluminum foil on the box? It might sound like a minor mix-up, but the story behind this everyday kitchen item is surprisingly fascinating. In today's video, we're diving deep into the difference between tin foil and aluminum foil, how they originated, how they compare in properties and usage, and why one replaced the other. By the end of this video, you'll have a whole new appreciation for that shiny sheet you wrap your leftovers in. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is tin foil? Tin foil, as the name suggests, was once a common packaging and wrapping material made from actual tin. It was widely used up until the early 20th century, particularly in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Tin foil was praised for its ability to preserve food and block out light and air, which made it an effective tool for keeping things fresh. However, tin had its drawbacks. It was expensive to produce, relatively heavy, and had a strong, distinct metallic taste that could sometimes transfer to the food it was wrapping. This metallic aftertaste was one of the primary issues that led people to seek alternatives. Enter Aluminum Foil Aluminum was first isolated as an element in the early 19th century, but it wasn't until the 20th century that industrial-scale extraction made it affordable. The real game-changer came when the hall hero process, a method to extract aluminum from bauxite, became widely adopted. Suddenly, aluminum could be produced cheaply and in vast quantities. Aluminum foil hit the commercial market around 1910, with the first major use being in packaging products like candy and tobacco. It quickly gained popularity, thanks to its lightweight, corrosion resistance, and most importantly, its neutrality. It didn't impart any taste to the food it touched. By the mid-20th century, aluminum foil had almost completely replaced tin foil in the market. But despite the switch, the term tin foil stuck around, especially in casual speech. It became one of those linguistic leftovers, like how we say dial a phone number, even though most of us haven't used a rotary phone in decades. Some people still say tin foil today without realizing they're actually talking about aluminum. It's a case of language evolving slower than technology. Now let's take a closer look at how the two materials actually compare. Tin is a much rarer metal than aluminum, and while it's more resistant to corrosion in some conditions, it's also softer and less malleable. Tin foil was thicker than modern aluminum foil, which made it less flexible for detailed wrapping or forming around shapes. Aluminum foil, on the other hand, is incredibly thin, lightweight, and can be pressed into very tight creases. This makes it ideal for kitchen use, where people are frequently sealing containers, covering dishes, or wrapping irregular food shapes. Another big difference lies in how they react to heat. Tin has a melting point of about 232 degrees Celsius, which is higher than aluminum's 660.3 degrees Celsius. But despite aluminum melting at a higher temperature, aluminum foil is much thinner than the old tin foil ever was, so it heats up quickly and can even catch fire if exposed to an open flame or used improperly in a microwave. That said, aluminum foil conducts heat extremely well, which is one reason it's widely used in cooking, particularly for things like roasting vegetables or covering meats to prevent overbrowning. In terms of safety, aluminum foil is generally regarded as food safe, but there are concerns about using it with acidic foods like tomatoes or vinegar. In such cases, 
aluminum can leach into the food, especially when heated. The risk is relatively low, but it's enough to make some people prefer alternatives like parchment paper or using glass containers. Tin foil had similar concerns, though mostly related to the metallic taste rather than chemical leaching. Let's not forget the conspiracy theories and pop culture associations tied to tin foil. The term tin foil hat has become shorthand for conspiracy theorists who believe the foil protects their brains from mind control or surveillance. Interestingly, these references started when real tin foil was still in use, but over time, aluminum foil has replaced it even in this cultural metaphor. Still, no matter the metal, the idea of wrapping your head in foil to block radio waves or psychic interference has become a pop culture punchline, albeit with zero scientific credibility. Beyond the kitchen and the conspiracies, Aluminum foil has taken over nearly every role that tin foil once played. It's used in packaging, insulation, electronics, and even space exploration. NASA uses multiple layers of aluminized mylar, a form of foil, for spacecraft insulation. The reflective surface helps control temperature and protect delicate components from radiation. That's a long way from wrapping sandwiches. In summary, tin foil was the go-to material before aluminum became accessible and affordable. While it served its purpose in an era with fewer packaging options, it was quickly outclassed by aluminum foil in terms of cost, usability, and neutrality. Today, the term tin foil is mostly a misnomer, a relic of the past still lingering in our vocabulary. But now, the next time someone says, pass the tin foil, You'll know the full story, and maybe you'll take a moment to appreciate how this unassuming kitchen item reflects the evolution of science, technology, and even language. So the next time you're wrapping up some leftovers or lining a baking sheet, think about how far we've come. From rare tin sheets to space-grade aluminum films, this thin, shiny material has a much deeper history than most of us ever consider. And while you probably won't see actual tin foil on the shelves anymore, its legacy lives on every time we tear off a fresh sheet from the roll. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.